Hey everyone, my name is John and I'd like to introduce a new video series focused on learning how to program. Programming is an incredibly useful skill to have since almost all major companies have some form of software as a product or a service. Uh, you know, whether it's web applications, database management, even simple websites, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Companies are always looking for people who have this skill, no matter what discipline your, you know, your original background is from, so it really doesn't hurt to train it. For this first video of the series, we'll talk about programming in general, what popular languages are being used today, and how to set up our programming environment. So what is programming? In, in the simplest form, programming is simply instructing a computer on doing a task. So it can range from a very basic simple task, such as a math problem or writing to a file, uh, you know, all the way up to wide-scale applications such as a video game or a computerized music studio, for example. Um, so to start out with, we'll be focused on some of the smaller, simpler tasks just to get the feel of programming and learning the general fundamental concepts. Um, and then eventually we'll kind of work our way up to bigger and better, you know, pretty big applications, hopefully. Um, so I guess I'll talk a little bit about programming languages. So like communication, programming has many different languages. Just as there are languages for communication, such as English, Spanish, Mandarin, French, um, so on and so forth, there are many different programming languages as well with different syntax. So the good news is that in general, um, with programming, it's very easy to transition to a new language after learning one. Um, you know, that's kind of in contrast to communication, where let's say if your first language is English, it might still be quite difficult to, to you know, transition to learning Mandarin right away, for example, but um, generally in, in programming it's very easy to learn new languages very quickly since they all follow the same concepts, just the syntax is different. Um, so I guess for some examples of today's commonly used languages, um, you know, some of the big ones are C++, C Sharp, Java, um, Python, JavaScript, um, just to name a few. Um, for this video series we'll be using Python just because it's a very simple and easy to read and understand language. So without further ado, I guess we'll get Python installed onto our computers. So if we pop open our web browser and in our search bar here, we'll type in Python 2.7 and we'll go ahead and click on the first link that shows up here. So we'll scroll on down to the download section and whatever link you select here is just kind of based on the operating system you're using. So um, I'm assuming most of us will be on, on Windows or Mac. If you're on Windows, you want to click, you'll want to click uh, the Windows x86 MSI installer here, um, and then some of these other ones down here for Mac, but I'm on Windows, so I'll click this one, and we'll let that download. All right, so we'll pop that open, and we'll click Run. Now, so I've already got Python installed on my computer, um, so what you see here might be different from what you see on your screen, um, but it should be a pretty straightforward process. Just, you know, kind of select everything and click next all the way through. Um, and there's nothing, like no uh, crazy stuff to worry about there, so just click next all the way through and it should install, no problem for you. Um, so I'll go ahead and close that out. Now there's kind of an additional kind of complicated step you have to go through here just so that your computer knows where to find Python and this is pretty important so um, if you pop open your start menu and go to computer and right click on it um, and then go down to properties there should be an option here for advanced system settings so we'll click on that and then we'll click on environment variables and then what we want to do is we want to create a variable called path that contains the value which is our Python installation so um, if you don't see a path variable already here we'll just go to new and we will create path as our name and then our value will simply be wherever we installed Python so I think for most of us it'll be you know C colon backslash Python 27 and you should go ahead and click OK if you don't have that um, so if you already do see a path variable here that's okay we can edit it so we'll click edit now so I've already got mine there but if you if you already have a bunch of other stuff there um, that's not Python. That's okay. You can keep it there. Um, we're just going to add our Python thing along with that. So we'll go semicolon just to separate them. And then we'll, you know, again, add our Python installation here. So C colon backslash Python 27. Again, if you, had, if you installed Python in a different location, um, just make sure that's the location you're putting here. So we'll go ahead and click OK for all of that. And now that that's done, um, we'll just go ahead and check that our computer knows where to find Python. So um, we'll pop open our start menu again here. And in our search bar, we'll type in CMD. And there should be a program up here called CMD.exe. 
So we'll go ahead and open that up. And now what this is here is this is what's called a command prompt. So this is where we basically will be running all of our Python programs that we write. Um, for now, since we don't have any Python programs, we can't really do anything with it, but we will double check to see that we have Python properly installed. So we'll just click or type in Python and press enter, and you should get a nice little message saying, yep, Python 2.7 and so on. So great. Now we'll close on out of this, and there's one additional thing we need before we can start writing um, our first Python program, and that is a text editor. Um, so there's kind of a lot of debate about which text editor is the best, and there's a lot of different ones out there. Um, personally, I just like something nice and straightforward and simple. Um, so I use something called gedit, so I'll go ahead and type gedit windows download. And then I'll scroll on down to the wiki.gnome.org link down here. And we'll go to the download section, and again, based on whatever operating system you use, or you're using, um, just make sure you click the, the appropriate one here. So I'm on Windows, and I'll go down to the latest version, and we'll click on this. So we'll let that download. I guess I should mention, if you're not using Windows or Mac, you're probably on some kind of Linux distribution system, or uh, Linux operating system. Um, now, if you're on Linux, I think for the most part, all Linux distributions, um, you know, include Python and you know a text editor by default in the installation. So if you're on Linux, you probably won't have to worry about anything in this video. Um, you can probably just skip on to the next video. But I think for most of us, this is pretty applicable. So we'll open our gedit download here. Um, we'll click run. And again, it's a pretty straightforward installation. You're just going to go ahead and accept, and then it should be as straightforward as just clicking you know next all the way through. Um, again, I already have it installed, so I won't worry about this. Um, but it's, it should be no problem getting that installed. So we'll go ahead and close this and just double check that it's here. I'm going to search for it since I have no idea where I installed it, but there it is. So you should see a thing called gedit if you search for it. So we can open that up and there it is. It looks like a pretty plain old, you know, nothing fancy here, just a, a you know, a space to, to, te to write text. So um, that pretty much covers setting up our, our development environment and in the next video, we'll focus on writing our very first Python program.